Railbirds, and welcome to Bird's Eye View, a video blog where I touch on subjects regarding the Packers. It's been a while since I've last done one of these, uh, so I wanted to try another one. And also, welcome everybody to JS Online, our new home for Railbird Central. I'm really excited about the jump, and I think uh, some good things are going to come of it. Hopefully a little more readership, hopefully a little more interaction and participation. So anyway, I'm excited, and thanks for coming over to watch me here on JS Online. Uh, today's subject, I wanted to talk about a post I made about a week ago uh, regarding mock drafts and how a lot of them think the Packers are going to draft an offensive lineman. I found out in a brief survey of, I think, 81 mock drafts, found out that over 82% of the drafts I looked at have the Packers drafting an offensive lineman, which is obviously a very high percentage. Uh, I want to give my opinions about some of those prospects uh, that people think the Packers may take in the first round of this upcoming April's NFL draft. Uh, the person's name that came up most often was USC tackle Charles Brown, who I really like, although I do think he may be a stretch of a pick at number 23. Uh, I've watched Brown very closely, uh, knowing that he would just be, uh, you know, kind of a first, second round type of player. I watched him very closely in the Emerald Bowl when the USC Trojans defeated uh, Boston College, uh, so I zeroed in on him and I noticed he had very good footwork. He is a former tight end and I think he has a lot of athleticism. Uh, he's able to get to the second level very quickly and I think he can play well in a zone blocking scheme. So there are many positives about him, although he's very rough. He hasn't played left tackle his whole life. Uh, he's not very big. So I think there are things that may prevent him from going as high as number 23. Uh, the person's name who appeared next most uh, at 18 times in my little survey of mock drafts was Oklahoma tackle Trent Williams. Uh, some people are down on Williams, thinking that he might not be a left tackle at the pro level. Uh, Williams played left tackle his senior year in college at Oklahoma, uh, whereas his junior year he was playing right tackle. And... Uh, and while some people think he, he doesn't have that athleticism, that elite ability to be a left tackle in the pros, I do think his ability to play all over the offensive line really is a good thing for him and adds to his value. Uh, not only has he played left tackle and right tackle in the Sun Bowl, he actually played some center this past year when Oklahoma played uh, Stanford in the Sun Bowl. So he really does have some versatility and uh, that may add to his value even though he might not be a left tackle. He might be a guy that you could plug anywhere and, and find out where he fits in later. Um, the next most uh, coming in, uh, the third person whose name appeared the most was Iowa tackle Brian Balaga. And those who know me know I'm not really too high on the Iowa prospect. Uh, I'm a Big Ten fan and watched a lot of Big Ten football this year and saw that Bulaga struggled against some of the Big Ten's better guys, uh, Michigan defensive end Brandon Graham and Wisconsin's O'Brien Schofield. And Bulaga did not perform well against them and got beat uh, fairly regularly in those matchups. And I just don't think that that's going to help him uh, as far as his draft stock goes. Um, I know a lot of people are really high on him, and I seem to be in the minority in this case. But uh, for one, you know, a lot of mock drafts I see have Belaga going higher than number 23, so the Packers might not have that option anyway. But uh, anyway, I'm, I'm down on him. Uh, count him as a slider, in my opinion. A uh, couple other names that just showed up, uh, Maryland's Bruce Campbell. I will admit, I don't know very much about Campbell. Uh, Maryland wasn't a very good team this year, and that's, that's probably why I didn't see a lot of them on TV, so I, I don't have a lot of knowledge with him. Uh, Idaho's Mike Iapati, uh, I like him a lot. Uh, he's been a guard, uh, been a guard at Idaho. Uh, a lot of people think he may be a tackle in the NFL, although uh, he's... Don't know yet. Uh, he's a guy who's not been playing football his whole life. 
and uh, kind of trying to see where he fits in. So uh, I do like him. He was probably the name at the Senior Bowl name most often as a guy whose stock is on the rise. So I really do like Mike Iapati. I don't know if he'll make it to number 23. Uh, I tend to think with his performance at the Senior Bowl um, that he will go higher than that. Um, so uh, Oklahoma State's Russell Okun named uh, one time in a mock draft. Uh, he seems to be the top overall tackle prospect out there this year in the 2010 draft class. I don't, I almost guarantee he won't slide to the Packers. Uh, some people think he's overrated. I don't think he's one of them. Should the Packers have a chance to draft him, I'd welcome him with open arms, but I don't see that being the case. And finally, one more tackle prospect, Rutgers' Anthony Davis, uh, who I also don't know a whole lot about yet either. Uh, it is only February. We're still, uh, you know, months away yet from the draft uh, and haven't even had the combine yet. My opinions might change on these players, but uh, seeing as the season's now over, everybody's attention is focused on the draft and the offseason, I just wanted to touch a little bit on this, and uh, thanks for letting me air out my thoughts here, and uh, hopefully I'll have another Railbird's eye view uh, here soon. Thanks. See you later.